This orchard just looks so good when it's freshly mowed. We love getting out here and doing this. So it's time to take on a project here in the next little installment of the fruit tree orchard. And that is our blueberries. All right, so this row of blueberries here and this row were a little bit different. And you guys have seen, we've had two rows of blueberries all along, but when we originally planted these, this row right here was the first row we planted. And they were bought from a nursery that got them bald and burlapped from another nursery down in Oregon. However, they were, the root ball was heavy clay. And so we've had them for a long time, but they've never fully gotten established and grown well in this bed. These were all purchased at a nursery in one gallon pots and from the, and they were small. These were big ones. These were small and they got established right away, started growing roots into the soil. And you can see they are just growing really, really well. We got lots of flowers on them and we're expecting a ton of berries this year. So we came through here and we ripped up all those old blueberries. We tried to give them a chance. We tried to see if they would make it and do well, but they just were not performing like we wanted them to year after year. So we went and picked up some more blueberries in one gallon pots, just nice young blueberries. We got a few different varieties here. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come through here and start digging holes for all of them. And then as we get all the way down through here, we'll have the holes, we'll get the pots out of the way and then line them all up. So we've got a nice straight row here. That's perfect. Yeah, because we don't need to bury them too deep here. We just want to keep right. them at soil level. There you go, M. So you Good can do job. the last one. There's like a blueberry or something. Okay. Part of a blueberry. Go ahead. Oh, is that probably one of the... Or a branch. Probably know. one of the roots there. Cool. I like digging. Man, I love hearing that. Let's get after it, girl. We'll see if you like digging in another couple of years. Yeah, that's perfect, hon. Because we're just going to go... We're going to plant these right to the top level of the bark here just with the surface of the soil we don't want to bury these things we just want to get them set in there real nice and then we're going to mulch over top of them with grass so remember girls we want to dig them holes straight too uh -oh. you're doing good, good job, your dad's a slave driver how are we doing there foreman we doing a good job huh buddy we doing a good job you got your guitar going there, buddy. <laughs> so what I want to do is uh, we need to get all these out of the pots, set down in the holes, and then we'll make sure they're spaced out properly. They're up to the right height. And when they're all just set in these holes, spaced out at the right height, then we'll just backfill everything. And the rest will be grass clippings. What do you think, buddy? So while they're digging in the dirt down there, I'm gonna show you guys this Toro. These are those little cuttings that we did a while back. And you can see that they filled out those one gallon pots with roots last summer and are just vigorous little growers. This is such a great little variety to plant in the garden. It's just loaded with uh, blueberries. But actually while they're doing that, let's come over here and show you this is actually the Toro right here. And that's the mother that those came off of. And it is just, you can see loaded with little flowers that are gonna start opening up soon here. And then over here is the Chandler. This one actually does a real good job pollinating this Toro and it gets loaded with fruit every year too. The, the Chandler's real sweet. The Toro is a good berry too, not quite as sweet as the, as the Chandler, but a heavy producer. And if you wait a little while to pick them, they do get sweeter. Anyway, these two together, they're really good for the Pacific Northwest. The Chandler and the Toro. All right, so we got them all lined out exactly where we want them, spaced apart evenly and brought to the height that we want them. And we just, you don't want to bury these blueberries or really any plant in the soil. You just want the tops to be flush with the surface. Sometimes I even put them a little bit above the surface. So backfill all of this, E, backfill all that, not over top of the soil, but just around the outside. And then we'll kind of pack it down in a little bit, okay? All 
All right, so we got them all planted now. What I should have done the first year, which I'm gonna do right now, is get all this in a video so I never forget what varieties we've got. So help me out, buddy. What do we got down there? Duke. Duke, let's go down the row. Number two, I think it's a Chandler. Chandler? Chandler. <laughs> and then Toro, yep, the Dunn labeled their Toros. Chandler. Another Chandler. Early blue. Early blue. Sweet. You already have them memorized. Well, a little bit. Chandler. Chandler. Toro. Toro. I think that's a Duke. Duke. Sweet. You want to go over and do the other side sure. before we forget five years from now? Now, I don't have labels for all these because a lot of them have blown off in the wind. I know a few of them, but not all of them. What's that one? Rika, R-E-K-A, for those of you that are looking. It's been a good variety, but uh, we didn't get enough water to it last year, and I think that's what's going on. I pruned it back heavily. We'll see how if it bounces back. This one doesn't have a tag. Eh, unfortunate, but uh, What's it called? Do I don't know. It might be an early blue. I think we had an early blue in here as well, but that one's gone. That one's gone. It's getting a nice producer right there. Wish I knew, but I just don't. This one's the Toro, and I know that, and I've got that in other videos. And then this is the Chandler. How do you know? Because we got the tag on it. Doro. This is the Doro. Pink popcorn. That's your pink. I always know that one. Pink popcorn. That's a cool one, huh? It turns out uh, the, 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 yep, the, the blueberries are pink. I don't Northland. know if they taste like popcorn. Northland. That's a big one. That one gets really... Every year I have to prune it back. You can see I've pruned it back a lot over the years. So now we know all the varieties that we do know at least. There's a few down on the end that the tags have blown away and we just don't know, but that's okay. They're all good. So from here, we're just gonna do grass clippings. So as you can see, we've already started this row here with grass clippings. And in the beginning, we did some wood chips over all of it. But since then, we've got so much grass to mow and it makes perfect mulch. It just knocks those weeds back. And once we do this in the spring, we really don't have much of a problem at all with weeds through the summer. It's just in the, in the early part of the spring before the grass goes down, we do a little bit of weeding and then uh and then the clippings go down well don't bury it <laughs> i like to do a heavy uh heavy thick layer of that stuff and then it just kills all the grass and weeds around it and mulches and feeds and there's an example of that over here with the apple somebody actually asked me off of that last video we did about the orchard are those grass clippings and yeah they are you can see I mowed out there in the fig orchard the other day and then put a thick layer of grass clippings down and it looks really good. It's, you know, it's it replenishes every week here in the Pacific Northwest in the spring. This is probably the only layer of grass clippings I'll put down around these apple trees, but it's enough that it'll just knock back most of the weeds and the grass and all that around there. I'll come back and weed eat a little bit around the edges, but pretty much that's all we do for mulch. And the thing I love most about it is it just continues to break down and feed the soil microbes and in turn feed the trees. So the one thing you do want to remember is if you're doing this, just make sure you leave the base open so that you're not smothering that tree or getting any rot around the lower branches there. But uh, yeah, we do a pretty thick layer and it just smothers everything out, feeds the blueberries. So it's been probably a week and a half since we did all that project, getting these blueberries in the ground. And we've actually had to mow again since then. Like I said, the grass just grows fast in this area. But we came back over and we mulched heavily on this bed. And it really provides just a lot of nice uh, separation between the grass and the blueberry bed. And we'll just go to work smothering out any weeds and grass there around the blueberries. They're doing really well. They seem real happy down in there. We started actually doing the same thing on this side. And of course, you know, eventually you run out of grass to mow. You can see it kind of ended there. We did a little bit over there, maybe three or four weeks ago, but uh, things are progressing along. We'll fill in this area here once we mow next time, which will probably be just another week here. You can see all the blooms on these blueberries. They are really starting to come alive. And now that the weather's actually warming up, I've noticed that we've got some bees. I've seen a few honeybees around. I haven't seen too many bumblebees or mason bees, too many of the natives yet, but I've seen some bumblebees around, which is odd. You'd think it'd be in reverse, but look at that. 
tons of blueberries are gonna be forming on here. And this mulch just keeps this ground moist. That's one thing that we've learned over the years is that blueberries just require a ton of moisture. They just, they really like to be in good organic matter that is just moist through the hottest part of summer. And when they're in full sun, but they've got a constant supply of nutrients and moisture, man, they pump out the blueberries. Since this is a fruit orchard tour series, I might as well show you what else we got going on. I came through here and yeah, I need to clean all that up. I came through and I weeded this whole area right here. You can see our grapes are starting to come in. They're starting to get all kinds of nice little buds all over them. Get a little close up shot here. Lots of little buds forming all over them. I actually got behind and I need to prune a lot of this stuff back, but we'll get to it. And I thought I would take you guys, actually, before we go out there, let's walk over here. Take a look at these apple trees. They're actually just starting to get blossoms all over them. I mean, and they're just absolutely loaded with blossoms. We knew it was coming, just a matter of time. The weather's been real cold around here lately, but we're just starting to get nice warm weather coming in. And we're starting to see these blooms coming out. The pears are pretty well, you know, close to done. They've they've done what they're going to do. The petals are starting to fall off of them. But uh, hopefully we had enough pollinators. I kind of came along and hand pollinated a little bit. But we'll see what happens. As long as we're doing an update here on the whole thing, I'll just take you out to the figs and show you what I've been doing. So... Lots of mowing. That grass we planted came in really nicely. And I finished mowing here a couple days ago again, and then actually went out for the first time in a while and weed eated around all of these little, little beds here. But uh, I want to point something out here in this little fig orchard. I think pretty much after that last video and all your comments and just my own thinking, I think I have I think I've decided I am gonna plant a fig in between each of these trees so they'll be seven and a half feet apart, but I'll leave the 15 foot rows to be able to get mowers and tractors and things like that through, but it's just a cool, that's just such a cool looking view. All those things all lined out real nice. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys something. I've been getting a lot of questions about these figs and how they made it through the winter because you know, everybody was concerned about this hay and wondering if it was just going to make room for mice to make little homes so that they could chew up and destroy my figs. But look at that. So you can see there's a little something, a little home of some kind. So I have seen that a little bit around, but this tree right here, this is the Hollier. This one was one of the biggest, heavier growers last year. But this is the only tree it happened to. This is the answer to the question here. This is the only tree it happened to, but something must be living in here because it did get chewed up quite a bit down in there along the bark. I don't know if that's going to survive. I don't know if this branch will survive. It did it all the way around all this whole area. So I don't know how much cambium is intact. I know the roots are strong. It was a strong tree last year, so I'm not worried about it. I'm sure it'll come back up from the ground. But to answer that question, I've looked around all of them. That's the only one that it happened to. That's the only one I had a trouble with mice. But I want to show you something too. There are some mice living down in there, but another year of this moisture, I don't think it's going to be a problem because this stuff is breaking down very, very quickly. It's just sopping wet. Some areas, let's see if I can find one. Some areas, this stuff is just, look, it's almost soil. Well, not quite yet, but we're getting there. I mean, it's just really breaking down fast. So I think, and that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted that to break down and keep moisture down around the root set systems and start feeding you know, the area right around the figs. So that's exactly what we wanted to happen. It's going to take some time though. So that, that should answer that question. One tree got some chewed marks around it. I don't think it's going to be any permanent damage, but we'll see. And I'll update you on how that goes as time goes by. Oh, and we are in zone 8B and, it, but it's up north zone 8B, Western Washington state. And so 
a lot of people down south in the same 8B zone that I'm finding out, their trees are just a lot further ahead of mine. I'll show you where we're at real quick, quick comparison. One thing I am a little concerned about, this Martinenka Ramada, I don't know if it made it or not. It, you can obviously see, this was from cold. This wasn't from mice damage. It, it just, the bark just started getting flaking off of it because it died back above ground. And so it was just too cold for it. Uh, hopefully the roots are solid and new growth comes up from below. If not, I do have a backup for that one. But if you look at that in comparison, here's my I-258. It looks strong and healthy, but still no buds starting to come out. I mean, all of my trees are like this. No buds are starting to emerge except for a very few. One of them, my Desert King way over there in the back. And then a couple over here. We've got the, this is my improved Celeste, and it's a colder tolerant tree, and you can see I'm finally starting to get some growth on that. So some of these trees, I'm a little nervous about, but uh, you know, if they're not gonna make it outside in an orchard here, I don't know, I don't know that I want them here. <laughs> is that, uh, that makes sense? I guess, you know, it's like, why, why create this massive outdoor orchard if they're not gonna survive. But I do have backups of a lot of these and I took a lot of cuttings last winter to hedge my bet. So we'll see what happens over time. But you can see this is the Tacoma Violet. It's starting to do well. Once again, Pacific Northwest Zone 8B. Um, and you know, there's a few of them like that throughout here. We'll go over all this this summer as things start emerging. For those of you in this area that wanna know what does grow and what does well out here in our area. So I think that about wraps this one up. We got our blueberries planted, really excited about that. We've been talking about replacing them for a while now. So actually a couple of years because those blueberries that we originally bought that were grown in clay and then bald and burlap, they just never did that good. So if you're ever thinking about starting a blueberry orchard, I would highly consider just buying new young blueberries in little one gallon pots from nurseries and getting started with them that way because that first row that we started off from small blueberry plants in one gallon pots is doing tremendous. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.